so this is basically the idea. And obviously the question I guess you're asking at this point is, so what? How does this even matter in uh, human-centered machine learning or in what we do? And I would argue that it's, it's a matter of linguistics. It's a matter of, it's a subtle sort of uh, way of, way of thinking, I guess. Uh, but I would argue that human-centered machine learning is actually not a humanist agenda. It is a dataist agenda, according to these definitions. Now, you might have some other definition, of course, of what humanism entails, and fine. Uh, but building on these premises, I would argue that HTML is a dataist agenda. Because through HTML, what happens is that we, we aim to give machines more agency and authority in, in, in our lives. We want to build machines that we can trust. We want to build machines that, uh, that can explain themselves when they are in disagreement with human decisions. Hell, we don't even want to build machines. We want to teach machines. We, want, we, we now, even in our language, we take them as, as agents with like personality and even, even consciousness on some level. Um, to this end, I would argue that this, this sort of goal of democratized, unbiased, explainable, intelligible, uh, usable AI is actually, uh, so that, that's, that, that's the result of it. It will result in AI having more authority in our lives. It will uh, discount human decision making as a result. And you can actually see this in, in even like the, the pictures and the language that we use. We talk about, for example, teaching machines. Uh, we, we make diagrams of, of human-centered or human blue AI, for example, like this one that I uh, stole from a lecture uh, at, from, uh, at the, at the uh, MIT human-centered AI course. Uh, this, as you can see, is not human-centered. In this picture, the model is at the center. This is, a, like I call into, into, into question the name human-centered AI itself based on this diagram, because this is not human-centered. This is basically human at the bottom. Um, that's, that's, that's what I would argue based on this picture. Uh, so this picture actually is, is this is a picture of human-centered ML. This is what human-centered means. If you put human in the actual center as the filter through which decisions are made, as the agent that actually makes the decisions and, and sort of um, calls the shots basically. Now I need to look at my notes. Uh, apologies, because I wanted to change my slides and could not. My fault, that's what I'm Yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it happens. Um, so based on this, for example, based on this, this notion, uh, what I would propose initially to this community uh, is that maybe we can, we can reconsider our language and reconsider like the fundamental goals that we have. For example, instead of democratization of AI, we should be talking maybe about the sophistication of people. Rather than explainability of AI, we might, maybe we should be talking about the understandability of it, like teaching humans to understand AI, rather than teaching machines to explain themselves. We should, rather than about machine education, maybe we should be talking about human education. That's, that's my point. Um, we should maybe, instead of building systems so that humans can offload their decision making and just be lazy, build systems that allow humans to be more sophisticated. Make systems that allow humans to be more considered, just have, have more information when they are making the decisions. Now this, uh, this basically equates to prioritizing, I guess, human education uh, over machine education. Um, I actually did, you know, from all of the talks today that I've, I've listened to, there were some excellent ideas that, that serve this kind of uh, goal. I, I thank you for all of that. So already through listening to the talks, I am uh, enlightened. I've gained uh, so much wisdom that will sort of serve in uh, conducting further thinking in this field. Um, that said, this this what I what I told you already. This this might be sort of taken in a, in a negative tone. I guess you might understand from, from what I've said that uh, I, I mean to sort of uh, bash on this whole field of HTML. That is actually not the case. Uh, I must actually confess that I am a dataist. Uh, so, I mean, as a human being myself, I can only be dataist to a certain extent. I have to retain some degree of humanism, of course. Um, but the, the premise actually of having an all, so the, the premise of 
trying to merge into the data rather than the premise of uh, humans in the entirety of, of the universe having something special about them it actually makes more sense to me. So I am all for the data is the agenda, uh, but based on what, what you are for, I, I, would, uh, I would like to motivate you to reconsider your, your language and like the philosophical basis for, for all of our work. Uh, so future work, I personally would like to uh, explore this idea through critical design, so like the, through design that Jody was talking about, and through case studies. For those of you who may not possibly have heard what critical design is, I put here a picture to explain what it is. This is basically like a lighter, uh, a conceptual imaginary lighter, that as you use it, as you keep uh, lighting things with it, grows a tumor uh, on it. So like, it, the, the, the danger of, of smoking, for example, is physicalized to an artifact like this. And uh, I have not imagined any artifacts that would communicate this kind of idea about machine learning, hence future work. Uh, but also, you know, the question is also what kind of future work makes sense in this space? And also, does it even make sense? Like, do you even think that this idea has any merit at all? Do you think this is, or is it just like hogwash and I should like stop thinking about it? Uh, is, what, what, is that what you would say? I'm looking forward to hearing your views. And uh, if this is interesting to you, I'm open for uh, collaborations also in the future. Thank you very much. Trust is definitely one of those linguistic elements that that I'm talking about when I talk about this whole thing. Indeed. Any, any other? I'm curious, like when you when you when you frame human centered design in sort of like, you know, I guess through some sort of hierarchy where they can find that, you know, the, the model is at the center of this diagram, it is definitely not human centered. Could you elaborate if you were to draw out the notion of human centered Right. How could you, like, um, or, or put differently, why, because someone put the model at the center of a, or of a graphical flowchart, should we assume that it's not human centered? Does that make sense? Like, I'm not contesting that because it's there, it is not. I'm saying, like, just because it's there, how do we know that it is not human centered? I, I definitely admit that the diagram is a bit of a caricature. I, I mean, the way that I talk about the diagram is it's a caricature. Uh, and I do get your point about human-centered design because artifacts are often at the center of the, the human-centered design process. The human is usually around the artifact. Um, so that's, that's true. I, I, meant, I meant to use that as a caricature to illustrate a point. Um, however, it, it is, I think, a, a step where you can, like, sort of, when, when you visualize an idea, at that step, you can just pause and like reflect on it for one, for one moment. Is this truly human-centered, or is this truly does the language and the image resonate with each other? Uh, which might sometimes be important, or you might decide that it's not important, or or you might decide something else. Please, I'm having a hard time understanding the premise of the talk. Um, mm -hmm. So we, as a humans, we, we create things to make our life easier, right? Mm -hmm. So we build cars to transport, you know, faster and easier. And mm -hmm. come in. Are we like worshiping cars in the area of transportation? And uh, I bet you, possibly on, 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 top, yeah. yes. <laughs> on top of what he said, I bet you any diagram you create, the humans are gonna be on the sides because they're gonna provide inputs or like use the system. 
But if you put the whole thing in a diagram, everything is serving humans. Like cars are serving us, the algorithms, everything. So I think you should look at it that way instead of us as ACML people who did it. Together. It's very interesting that you bring up cars because I come from Istanbul. Istanbul is a city of uh, almost, like officially it's a city of 15 million people. Uh, realistically, I think it's more like 20 million. And what's interesting about the city is that it is very much car centered. I think the, uh, uh, the city planners who have built this place are in, indeed worshipping cars and promoting the well-being of cars over pedestrians. I now live in Sweden, for example, in Gothenburg, where it is a smaller city and it is very much human-centered, and this is even reflected in the laws. Uh, so I, I, it, is, it is possible to be uh, like car-centered or like, like, let's say, artifact-centered or be like worshipping an artifact. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's a matter of how you define these words. I, I do admit that in this talk and in these, these books that I talked about, the concept of worship, the concept of religion, these are a bit distorted. These are removed from what we use these words to, to stand for in daily life. All right. um, and that, that is, perhaps that is what you're pointing out, and it is true, yes. I'm gonna try to keep things flowing, because we're a bit over time, but this was a fascinating talk. I want to thank again the speaker.